Hi, am I on? Oh, of course, my dogs decide to come out once I start talking. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Caitlin Benedict, for those of you who don't know me. I am the second horn in the Santa Fe Symphony. I've been in the symphony for about four seasons now, I think. I moved to New Mexico four years ago from Los Angeles, where I was born and raised and did grad school. I won an audition with the New Mexico Philharmonic when I was at the end of finishing my coursework for my doctorate. And so I decided, let's uh, get up and move. I wanted to get out of California. I needed a little bit uh, of something different in my life. So thank you for joining me here. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna get going with a couple of questions. First of all, Jesse, you are incredible. Your playing was beautiful. You have such incredible energy. I am so sad that I couldn't be there with you to feed off of that amazing, powerful energy that you just, you're just such a bright light. All right. So first, I'll tackle this. How am I keeping myself busy during this intermission? Um, so like Jesse, I am doing a lot of yoga, a lot more than usual, actually. Um, yoga is something that I've turned to recently. Yoga and Pilates, actually. I've turned to quite often, actually, as a way to sort of manage my emotions, manage how I can bring my best self to the table, because, you know, life gets crazy sometimes, and you just have to take a minute to breathe, right? So I've been doing yoga with Adrian. I also have a local studio here, Blissful Spirits. They are incredible. Every teacher there is amazing. Um, and during this, you know, quote unquote intermission, they are live streaming a bunch of classes every day. So if you're into yoga, you should check them out. That's Blissful Spirits in Albuquerque. Um, I have a garden now. This is the second year that I've tried gardening. It's going better than the first. I've been spending a lot of time with my dogs. I have Harper, who's over here, and Daisy's back in the bedroom, I think. Um, I'm getting married in August. Well, I think I'm getting married in August. Um, or at least I'll be getting married. I don't know if people will be present. So I've been doing a lot of planning, hoping that that still goes strong. Um, yeah, other than that, I have a, I have a day job also, actually. I forgot to mention that. So I'm still working 40 hours a week. Um, I love the people I work with. It's something new for me. Um, yeah. Let's see here. What are personality characteristics of horn players? I don't know. Does anyone want to take a guess? <laughs> um, I hope I don't offend any horn players out there by saying this, but I think horn players in general are um, fairly nerdy people. We kind of are brainiacs. They're playing the French horn takes a lot of care and caressing, and uh, there's a lot to think about, which is a plus and a minus sometimes, I think. Sometimes it's nice to just get out of your own way and not think about anything. But yeah, I think, by and large, we're all pretty nerdy people. I don't know, do you guys agree? <laughs> Let's see here. What performance am I most excited about on the 2021 symphony season? Well, I think, there's two. Um, first, I'm excited to hear Jesse play because I've heard her as a soloist by herself, but I've never heard her as a soloist with the orchestra. And I'm, uh, I'm, I love the, the Rouse. It's a great piece of music. So I'm very excited for that. And then the second concert I'm most excited for, I think it's our season finale, uh, Brahms 2, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Brahms, Brahms is incredible. Brahms writes amazingly for horn. It sits perfectly on the instrument. Uh, there's the joke, what's your favorite Brahms symphony? The one that you're playing now. You know, they're all incredible. But Brahms II in particular, that was the first Brahms symphony I ever played when I was an undergraduate at the Eastman School of Music. So it holds a special place in my heart. What is the best part about playing the horn? Uh, <laughs> it depends what day you ask. <laughs> um, Horn is an incredibly emotive, uh, emoting instrument. You can uh, you can say a lot with your instrument. I mean, we all can, but I think the horn can pull up the heartstrings. Kind of like I feel this way about oboe as well. It can it can say a lot in the sound that it creates. Um, 
And that's something that I always try to focus on when I play. You know, I practice every day. I play my scales. I do all the things that aren't, you know, that fun to listen to or even that fun to practice all the time. But when I'm making music, I want, I'm listening to my sound. The most fun part to hear the sound, to hear how you mix with everyone else in the orchestra. Am I sounding like one right now? Am I sounding, am I part of the brass section? Am I playing a duet with the cello or the viola? So it's kind of like a, the glue in some respect between a lot of the different sections in the orchestra, which is fun for me. It's like a game. Oh my gosh, Steven. My fiance asked what it's like to be engaged to the super handsome baritone choir conductor, financial advisor. And it's, uh, it's lovely. Thank you for asking. I hope you weren't questioning my answer. <laughs> will I have an ensemble at my wedding? If so, what pieces will you have them play and which musicians? This is a really good question um, because the music portion has been the hardest thing for me to grasp. Um, a lot of you don't know much about my background, but both of my parents are actually professional musicians. My mom's a trumpet player. She's the trumpet professor at the University of Minnesota. And before that, she was a big studio player in Los Angeles. And my dad is a woodwind doubler, a jazz woodwind doubler. And so I grew up with music. And because of that, it makes choosing things a little bit harder. <laughs> I think there's a little more pressure for me. All of my family and friends are all musicians. And I don't it needs to be just right because I'm going to be paying attention. I know, I know what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> um, so yes, I will have an ensemble. Um, I was planning on having in the ceremony uh, just organ and trumpet, something simple, but I don't think we'll be able to have the ceremony indoors anymore for safety reasons. We want everyone to be safe and healthy. So we've moved that to an outdoor venue. So I think that's still pending. If anyone has any great recommendations, let me know. Um, but I think in terms of what they'll be playing, I'm going to stick to Baroque, classical, simple, nothing crazy and out there. Definitely not Here Comes the Bride or Canon in D or, or any of those. I think a little, something a little more, um, something a little less done. But yes, I will be having live music and thank you for asking that question, Catherine. What hobbies do I have and how am I developing or expanding them currently? So I touched on this a little bit in what I'm doing during this intermission. Um, I'm starting to garden. Actually, Stephen and I have been redoing actually a lot of things in our house, if you ask him. But uh, our big project is the backyard this year. So we've spent, I don't know, I don't know a, a lot of days pulling weeds. About a year and a half ago, he planted or he put in sod because it was just dirt in the backyard. So we're starting to plan out a concrete path and wood chips and what kind of flowers and things we want out there, which is really fun. I also uh, run a lot. And actually, I, um, I had a minor surgery in February, which I wasn't able to run for about a month and a half. So it's kind of I don't want to say it's good timing, but it's a silver lining that I do have the time now to get back to the things that I love to do. Stephen wants Eric Whitaker. We might have some Eric Whitaker at our wedding, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> what do I miss most about live performances? Um, Jesse touched on this a lot, um, and I am a firm believer in this as well. I miss the energy. I miss my friends. You know, I don't, I don't get on stage to sound the best or, you know, for something for my personal ego. I mean, obviously, I'm a professional and I, I take care of my craft, but it's really about the people. It's about the connections that you make with your colleagues, with the people in the audience, even with your staff. You know, we're, we're one big family and we have to keep it going. And that's, I mean, playing an instrument isn't easy. You have to practice every day, no matter how tired you are. Um, so I do it for the energy. I do it for my friends. I do it for the connection. All right, let's see if we have any others. Do I enjoy chamber music as much as or more than orchestral performance and how is the process different? Um, I love chamber music. Chamber music 
brings a different energy to me than playing in the orchestra. I mean, an orchestra really is just a large chamber ensemble. It's all the same concepts. Um, but the way that you can connect with a smaller ensemble on stage is really quite special. And you can bring to the audience, you can bring to life with your music um, something different every time. There's not as much to focus on. Um, you are one of five, one of eight. Someone's pulling in my driveway. Huh. Um, but yeah, uh, chamber music, I enjoy much more. It's something that I don't get to do here quite often, as often as I'd like, mostly because of my restrictions during the day since I do have another job. Um, but I love, love chamber music. Um, actually, before I answer another question, I also want to say I love playing with the horn section in the Santa Fe Symphony. Um, stemming from chamber music, you know, all, all four of us, we don't currently have a permanent principal horn, but um, Jeff, who's been sitting principal horn, is a fantastic player. Nate, who was there before him, is a fantastic player in person. We all get along really well. We support each other. We push each other. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a really special feeling to be able to get on stage and knowing that you have your, you have your group, you have your core, and you're all going to go for it with the same amount of energy. Are there any guest artists that I am particularly looking forward to playing with next year? And that's something, you know, when I go into a season, I don't know that I, I have an expectation for a guest artist or not. Um, I sort of take it as it comes. And we play with so many incredible guests here in New Mexico and with the Santa Fe Symphony, famous or not famous, um, that are really incredible musicians that bring a lot of different life to our orchestra that I would say it's just a pleasure to play with all of them. I mean, usually the horn parts aren't the most interesting in some of those, <laughs> those pieces. So I, I actually get to sit back and, and listen to what's going on around me much more than I'm able to in large symphony works, which I, which I really enjoy. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, the million dollar question. Am I still practicing daily or weekly? And is it easier or hard to carve out the time? Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this. I'm not really practicing very much. Um, however, practicing to me isn't just playing your instrument. Practicing to me is touching your instrument, but also listening, listening for enjoyment, finding inspiration around you, um, taking care of your physical health, and your mental health. And so since I don't actually have to play my horn, it's kind of hard to find time to, to touch all of those other aspects of practicing that I just mentioned. I'm taking the opportunity to hit some of those that I don't usually have the time to hit during the season when it's running full force. So I have been listening to music a little, a little bit more than usual. Um, usually the day's so busy then when I get some time to myself, it's just, Silence or crime podcasts, one or the other. Um, but yeah, I, I think I've played twice in the last week. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. My biggest weakness is tension. Um, I have like a high nervous energy naturally. So I can't believe the things that I can do on my French horn now that I'm more relaxed. <laughs> Um, it's incredible, and it's actually allowed me to soak in what that feels like and hopefully apply that moving forward. So I think if you have any other, oh, one other question. What awesome new recipes have you discovered lately? Thank you, Lindsay. I miss you. Lindsay used to be out here in New Mexico, and she is a great friend of mine. New recipes. Okay, so for Cinco de Mayo, I made chile relleno for the first time. Um, which was awesome, except that when I was <laughs> charring the chilies, I charred the stems off. So when I was dipping them in the batter, my hands had to be dipped as well, basically. Um, but that was really fun. Um, Steven, my fiance, has discovered how to turn our little kale grill into a, a pseudo smoker. So we smoked some ribs. And by we, I mean I bought the things and then he did the cooking. Um, we did ribs and a pork butt, which was really good. And that pork butt, I made some sweet potato salad, which, uh, Lindsay, I'll give you the recipe for if you want. It is so tasty. 
tastier than regular potato salad, in my opinion, um, and way healthier. <laughs> All right. Here is another question. What other instruments do you play, brass or otherwise? Also, what instrument have you always wanted to play? That is a great question. Um, I don't play any other instruments. Um, for brass, I'll get a little bit technical, um, but not for too long because it's kind of boring. <laughs> um, the way the mouthpiece sits on your on your lips, on your obiculus oris, uses different muscles. And so if you play another instrument for a long enough period of time, you're sort of not using the muscles on your main instrument and using different muscles. So. Since I play French horn full time, I don't really have the opportunity to explore. Um, I know Saz brass players do go back and forth, and I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little too square for that. <laughs> um, but I did, I, I started on trumpet, actually. I mentioned my mom's a trumpet player. So I started on the trumpet, and then in about fourth grade, I think, my mom told me that more girls play the French horn and that they make more money because there's more of them in the orchestra. So I switched to the French horn. I secretly think I didn't have a good enough high range to make it as a trumpet player, so she did me a favor. Um, but yeah, what was the second part of that question? Oh, do I have an instrument I've always wanted to play? Um, I think it would be awesome for the string bass, because you can play jazz, you can play in the orchestra, you can play by yourself, you can play with people. I think it's such a versatile, cool instrument, and you know, it's the ground you know, to build music on. Yeah, so string bass, I think, would be my answer for that. Did I ever consider a jazz career, given my parents' careers? Um, and I actually, I, I never, never considered jazz. I, I don't know if it's a personality thing. You know, I've, I'm a great reader. I, I can show up and play what's on the page, no matter what. Um, but in terms of the creativity <laughs> that comes with jazz and improvisation, that has never been something that I've been good at. Um, or comfortable with, which maybe means I should do it more often. But I uh, know I never considered jazz. I was in the jazz band when I was at Eastman, um, the uh, new jazz actually, and it was incredible. We did um, a revival of Gil Evans' music, and I was able to be in the orchestra. And we went to New York City and played a con some concerts. <clears throat> but again, that's um, I'm really good at imitating and mimicking. So I can swing if people around me are swinging. If you asked me to do it by myself, but <laughs> it wouldn't, it'd be a little square. <laughs> so I enjoy it, but no, I never considered a career in it. <laughs> all right. I just got a text from my horn players, all my New Mexico horn players saying, thinking of you all today. What good timing. Um, so I want to thank you all for being here. We really appreciate your support all the time, but really now when we're all just sort of unsure what's going to happen. Thank you for tuning in, and I will hopefully see you soon. Thank you.